Martin, Senior Consultant for Primary English and Literacy at Lancashire Professional Development Service and welcome to our vlog on reading. I'm going to just take you through a few key documents and approaches before Caroline Yvonstu and Catherine Leyland give you some practical ideas for teaching reading in the classroom to develop questioning. So our third vlog in the series is called Teaching Reading and Quality Questioning. And I'm just going to give you an overview of some documentation that does support the teaching, learning and assessment of reading and also informs development of quality questioning. Okay. First of all, um, as part of our suite of materials, we have a document called Key Learning in Reading. This was developed based on the national curriculum and covers year one through to year six. As you can see here, we've got one example and this is year two. These are end of year expectations based on the national curriculum, but with some additional detail to provide that extra support for teachers when planning for reading. And as you can see here, we've got the two dimensions, word reading and comprehension. We've got these documents available for reading, writing and maths right through from year one to year six. And you can see where to purchase them there at the link at the bottom. Just another example here, obviously year five. So again, the two dimensions continue, word reading and comprehension, comprehension. And these statements are extremely tightly progressive across both key stage one and key stage two. For the documentation which supports the development and of and teaching and learning of reading and, and formative assessment are the LAPS documents, learning and progression steps in reading. And we have three different versions of LAPS. First and foremost, we have guided, re guided reading group grids. Uh, we have planning for progression, where we, we like to call those side-by-side -side LAPS. And finally, we have some child-friendly versions of the statements. And these were developed in order that those end of year expectations were broken down into small steps, again, supporting the teaching and learning of reading. So just an example for you here, this is just one of the planning for progression snips from year four, and it's organized in the manner that at the end, of the, the final column here is the end of year expectation and then that statement has been broken down into three smaller steps which can be developed over time. Um, that could be across a unit of work, it could be across different units of work, it could be um, perhaps in some cases uh, in terms of acceleration in one lesson. So that just depends on your children and how you, how, how you are with your teaching of reading at that time. That's year four. And then just another example of LAPS. This is a group reading grid example, and this is from year one. Um, this supports uh, small group guided reading. Uh, children's names can be placed across the top. And as you can see at the top, it's got that link to the phonics phase and the approximate book band with all the key skills for word reading and comprehension developed underneath. Uh, lots of people like to use this to track where children are in reading and plan for next steps. So that's our group reading grids as part of the LAPS suite. OK, and then this brings us to reading assessment. So again, we've got another document that supports this from year one to year six. And indeed, the same for writing and maths, um, commonly known as CLIPS, the indicators of performance. So I'll just show you an example. Um, the key learning indicators of performance are the same grids as the key learning grids, but this time have key skills identified, high value skills, which are essential in that year group. These have been very carefully selected in terms of progression, in terms of expectation of moving on to the next year group and that these need to be secured so that we are ready in terms of age related learning to move into the next year group's learning. And also we looked very carefully at the end of key stage assessments, the teacher assessment framework, so that these feed in very specifically to those expectations at the end for the children. So CLIPS, they're known as CLIPS. And then, obviously, lots of you will know about key stage domains. So key stage one have five reading domains in terms of vocabulary, literal, sequencing, inference and prediction. And for key stage two, there are eight reading domains, uh, which obviously have further detailed 
examples there in terms of identify, explain how meaning is enhanced, look at how narrative content is contributed, make comparisons, and sequencing has developed into summarising. So I'm sure many people will be familiar with those. Um, obviously, we use these very specifically uh, to underpin and link with the key learning, and we have developed some support resources um, which are useful in the classroom. These are known fondly as the reading key rings, and these are prompts which are colour coded to the domains, which can then be used to support quality questioning. We've got lots of ways that we can use these in the classroom. So again, it might be something that you want to have a look at um, and develop yourself. So just an example there, we do have these for purchase and you can buy a bundle or you can indeed buy a larger bundle or you can just buy an individual set. And they're all made up for you, all laminated on key rings. So they are available from our publication site. And then in, if you're interested in all of that documentation, they are in, available to purchase individually or equally. They're all available via our annual Lancashire subscri subscription. Um, and this gives you access to the English and Maths website for a whole school for a year. So just to give you an example, um, at the moment, that's what's on our current subscription website. Lots of new documentation to support the current climate in terms of phonics, some reading support, some units of work, etc. Um, we also have another website where you can book courses, look at the rest of our plethora of publications, or indeed book some bespoke consultancy support, which might be some staff training or indeed a package of support for sustained impact. So thank you very much, folks. Um, I'm going to uh, just finish off now and say bye um, and lead into Caroline and Catherine's vlogs linking to that quality questioning on the teaching of reading. Hi everyone, I'm Caroline Yubantu, uh, teaching and learning consultant for primary English and literacy uh, with the LPDS team. Uh, as you've just seen there, my colleague Nicola Martin has introduced our key stage reading domain question keys. So I'm here to show you how our lovely question keys here are really useful and effective ways of developing children's understanding through reading through either shared or guided back in class. So I'm just going to pop on a little PowerPoint here and show you how we can use these really effectively with our children. So as you may be familiar with, in Key Stage 1, there are five reading domains. The first one being uh, all around vocabulary, drawing on knowledge of vocabulary to understand the text, which is vital for children's understanding in reading. The second one, 1B, one is to consider um, explanation of text, either in fiction or non-fiction, maybe looking at the characters, events and explaining what's going on in stories, uh, etc. The third one is thinking about the sequential events that happen in, in text or in non-fiction. And the fourth one is that bigger one, making inferences from the text. And then finally, in key stage one, we have prediction, which is 1A. So all five of those are what children are assessed against at the end of the key stage. However, right throughout the key stage in year one and year two, we need to be trying to promote these skills so that children are really familiar with these uh, questions around these domains and understanding the text at a deeper level. Uh, these are just, as you may have noticed, part of the Key Stage 1 curriculum. Obviously, there's lots of other reading skills that we will be promoting, so the word reading and understanding, the comprehension, but these are what the children are assessed against. So we're trying to get them used to uh, these high value skills in their reading to develop that understanding more thoroughly. OK, so here are question keys. Uh, we've got these made up on laminated cards, just with a little key ring here, which are really useful. Um, they're just a small size uh, pack that you can pick up and use in your shared reading, or you can use these in guided reading as well. So as you can see, each of the domains has a different colour. So we've got some lovely purple questions on our lilac um, colouring here. We've got uh, the literal ones, the 1B ones, on a nice green colour here. We have got a blue ones for the sequencing. 
we've got a nice light blue for the inference. And of course, in yellow, we've got the prediction at the end. We do have more questions around inferencing and less, for example, on prediction, because realistically, we want to focus on those higher value skills and inference uh, is one of the deeper skills that we need to look at. So if we are uh, sharing a text with children, I've just chosen one of these uh, books here. So this is Winter's Child. This is a gorgeous book about little two little boys who make a friendship in a snowy setting, shall we say, a winter setting. It's by Angela McAllister. Uh, so, for example, if you're reading to children, doing a shared read where the children are seeing the text and you've got the lovely book in front of you reading it, what you might be doing with the children is considering reading the text out loud. So we're not using the questions straight away. We're developing those skills from literal, looking at vocabulary, creating background knowledge, considering uh, clarifying the information, and then we're perhaps going to use the skill of the question domain keys at the end to draw from all that we've understood. So I might say to children, Tom fetched his skis and set off across the white meadow. He looped and swooped, making spray sparkle in the crisp, cold air. Out of the snow stepped a pale boy with ice blue eyes. Tom stopped and smiled. So we might do a little bit of reading with the children, obviously showing them the pictorial images as we read. And then we might say to children, what can you see? So using the pictorial images in Key Stage 1, some lovely picture books, the children might literally just say what they can see. So I can see a boy, I can see some snow, I can see some skis. You might encourage the children to tell you a little bit more. So the boy is on some skis and he's skiing down the white meadow. I can see a boy who has ice blue eyes and he's really pale. So we're starting off really literally just clarifying the information and just getting them to interact with the text and tell us what they can see. From there, you might talk about some background knowledge because some children might never have experienced the snow. So you might be saying to children, have you ever played outside in the snow? Have you ever built a snowman? What's the snow like? Is it icy cold? Uh, have you ever seen a snowflake? There's some snowflakes on this picture here. So we might be looking at uh, the setting and we might even be showing the children some more images of a wintry scene or looking at some little video clips to really, really get that background knowledge across if they haven't had that own experience. Moving on from that then we might read a little bit more. Do you want to play? asked the boy. Yes, said Tom. The boy ran off and Tom followed. They found a secret valley deep in drifted snow. Tom and the boy made polar bears and arctic hares and dazzling white horses. I want winter to go on forever, cried the boy. So developing a little bit more of the reading, and we might get the children to interact with the text and do a bit of that copycat reading back to us. We might dig a bit deeper and say to children, well, tell me, how many things can you tell me about Tom and the boy? Can you tell me three or four things that we now know? So some of the children might say, well, they've made some polar bears out of the snow. They've made some Arctic hares. They're in a deep valley. The snow's been drifted. Tom's found a friend. We don't know his name. He's called the boy in the story so far. The little boy wants winter to go on forever. So they might pull out two or three facts to share with the friend and then share with the class about what they found. So we're sort of retrieving the information just very literally from what they've heard. You might then use our little question hand to raise some questions and you might start with to prompt the children if they don't come up with lots and lots of things that they've heard. You might start with some of the easier questions like where are the boys or who is Tom with? And then you might move it into a little bit more inferential, like why do you think he wants to, the winter to go on forever? So we're starting to introduce a bit of prediction. 
At this point, you might be considering looking at the vocabulary. So vocabulary, we know, is crucial for children's understanding of text. If we don't know the words in the text and we don't know the meaning of them, then we're not going to be understand, able to understand at a deeper level. So this is where you might be doing some pre-teaching of the vocabulary. You might be playing some word games from some of the words that are in the story before they read the text and um, talking about what the, uh, the words mean and their definitions. Or you might be jumping on the words as we get to them in the text and explaining them as you go. So really clear, explicit and implicit vocabulary teaching alongside that lovely shared reading. Once we've got some of the words explained and we know what they mean and we put them back in the context of the text and we've done all that clarification and prediction and questioning, we might then consider using our question keys. So here we've got the lovely purple questions and we might pull out one or two of these question stems to ask the children. So for example, here, if we read a bit more, they played all day until Tom heard his mother calling him home. I have to go, he said sadly. That night as Tom gazed out of the starry wintry world, he heard a distant voice call from the mountains but he didn't see the pale figure sitting beneath his window so after reading a little bit more and exploring some of that vocabulary we might have picked out the word sadly or the word gazed or distance or mountains or pale we might have looked at those words either before we've read the text or during and then we might encourage children to answer some of these questions so i might pull out this question here that says find a word, can you find me a word that tells me that Tom isn't feeling very happy? And because we've done all that lovely work on, on vocabulary, hopefully the children will say, well, the word is sadly, because he says, I have to go, and he says it's sadly. So it doesn't come across as being very happy. We might ask them another question from the purple strand. Which word in the text describes, so here it is, which word in the text describes uh, the, way, the way that Tom looked out of the window? So if we go back into the text, it says, he heard that night as Tom gazed out of the starry wintry world, he heard a distant voice call from the mountains. So we know that the word is gazed, but the children might only be able to answer those questions if you've explored that vocabulary before reading the text or pulled it out during it and explored it together. And then we can ask that key question. So these question stems will be becoming really familiar with the children to help and support them at the end of the key stage, but we can use them in year one and in year two. We might also, for that particular question, be looking at some synonyms. So if you've got the word gazed and we've pulled it out of the text, children might be looking up in word hippo, other meanings of the word gazed and other words that mean the same thing. So peered, looked, stared, etc. We can develop that vocabulary from using that question stem. Here we've got some of our lovely uh, literal questions. So just to show you how you might move it on and use a different kind of question. Obviously we've got several different uh, domains here, but we're just gonna focus on the literal one. We've got all these lovely lime uh, greeny questions here that the children can use once we've explored the text a little bit further. So next day, there were only four logs left in the woodshed. What will we do? sighed Tom's mother. If the spring doesn't come soon, how will we keep Nana warm? Tom went out and chopped up his wooden skis for firewood. I'm too old for these now, he told Nana. Then Tom went out to play. So we might ask one of the literal questions here, if we find this one. Why did the character Tom, why did the character Tom chop up his wooden skis. Well, if we've explored the text, we might have done a little bit of drama to step into role as Tom. We can then perhaps get the children to answer that question that he chopped his wooden skis up because, well, it says he was too old for them now. And it also says he wanted them to make firewood. 
And some children might take that a bit further and even answer that question by saying he's trying to keep his nana warm because it's gone cold and his skis are perfect material of wood to burn to keep the, the lodge warm. Okay. So using these are really, really useful along the way. What we've also got to remember, if we are asking key questions to children, that we do need to build up to doing that, uh, as I've demonstrated. But the other thing we need to consider is varying the approach we ask questions so that children become familiar with that strategy so that maybe at the end of the key stage when they may have to do some sort of comprehension task, they are familiar with reading a written question and answering it in writing as well. So across your reading, your shared and your guided, your small group reading, you might want to consider pausing oral questions from the domains and getting the children to orally respond as we've been doing there. And then you might move that on to writing the question down for the children to do orally in a response. We can then move that on to, I'm going to orally ask you a question. This time I want you to write the response down. And then we're building right up to the written question with a written response. So that's just a really clear, good strategy across your year, particularly in year two, to get children familiar with those types of questions and the format they're presented in so that we can build up to them reading them themselves and then writing their own answers. Okay. The other thing that we might consider is breaking down the skills. So here we might have a look at using our LAPS document, our learning and progression steps document, which are here on the slide. Uh, this is the one for reading our progression steps document. We do also have guided group grids so that you can use these in small group work um, to pull out focuses and skills. So if you're choosing those question skills, we've got to remember to try and make sure that we're building up those laps, building up those key steps so that children can get to that end of year expectation. And in this case here, we've got dis demonstrating understanding of fiction and non-fiction text by answering those particular questions. But we might not do that all in one go. We would build uh, that skill up across your year so that children uh, are familiar with that skill from oral into writing and then we deepen with the types of text we're presenting to children either in shared or getting them to read independently in guided small group work or individual reading. Okay. Hopefully you have got a really good understanding now how to use those dom domain question keys. So have fun, uh, make use of them and bye for now. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Leyland. I'm a teaching and learning consultant for primary English and literacy with the LPDS team. And I'm here today to follow on from Caroline and Nicola and to introduce you to the key stage two reading domain question keys. So without further ado, let me share with you my PowerPoint. Okay. So at key stage two, we have eight reading domains. Okay, and you can see there they are colour coded. Some of them are similar to key stage one, but obviously we've got some extras in there as well. So you can see two A there is to give and explain the meaning of words in context. So that's one of our vocabulary key skills. 2B is to retrieve and record information and key details, both from fiction and non-fiction. 2C is all about summarising. 2D are those tricky, more inference questions. Children find those ones and particularly difficult. 2E is to predict what might happen from details stated and implied. Reading domain 2F is to identify or explain how information is related and contributes to meaning as a whole. 2G is another vocabulary um, reading domain that's to identify or explain how meaning is enhanced through choice of words or phrases. And 2H is to make comparisons within the text. OK, so a few more there than we've got at key stage one. And as Caroline showed you, we've got our key stage two um, reading domain question keys as well. 
and ours have all been printed out and put on those lovely sturdy key rings and these should be used obviously for your shared reading, your guided reading, you can train other adults who read with your children up on these so these are brilliant for TAs so these should be a really key part of your reading kit with your children. Okay so the book I've chosen to look at is called The Amazing Tale of Ali Pasha and that one is written by Michael Moore Pergo and it's all about a tortoise called Ali Pasha and if you want to know why the tortoise is called Ali Pasha then you'll have to read the book. Okay, so as Caroline demonstrated, what we're going to do first of all is to read and enjoy the book. We want to immerse the children into the text and make sure that they are enjoying it. And it's also an opportunity, obviously, during your shared reading for you to model reading fluently aloud. Okay, so let me read the first page to you. It was the 1950s and I was working for the local paper, the Lowestoft Journal. I told my mates I was a junior reporter, but really I was just the office boy. Now and again, I'd be trusted with a reporting job, small jobs only mind, and only when the proper reporters were busy. Still, it got me out of the office and away from the endless tea runs and filing. It was weddings mainly. Everyone got married on a Saturday back then, so there was often a big fancy do at the church and a small wedding in the chapel at the same time. You can probably guess which one I got to report on. So what we do, obviously, when we've read that first page and we've talked about it with the children, what we might do is just maybe do a little bit of clarification because we've got to think about the children's background knowledge. Now, for our children at Key Stage 2, the 1950s was a very long time ago and they might not have much knowledge on there. So what we might need to do before we start asking our key questions is to just do some background knowledge about the 1950s. And you might have some images that you might have brought up or you might have a website or you might have an image of a newspaper from back then and talk about in popular culture and fashions and anything just to give the children a little bit of background knowledge because it is quite difficult sometimes when stories are set historically for the children to have any understanding of that because obviously it's not within their personal experience so we would recommend there that we did a little bit of background knowledge for clarification and we just might get the children to connect with the text by asking them one key question so I might just say right so in this um, story Trevor that's the main character's name um, is a new well he's and wants to be a news reporter tell me what you already know about news reporters who can tell me anything about news reporters and by doing that what we're doing is just opening up that conversation and getting our children to connect with the text OK, and again, we've had the opportunity to read to the children out loud and the children have now heard some fluent reading um, being modelled aloud, which is really important. Once I've done that, what I do would start asking some key questions from the text. Now, what I've chosen to do is just focus on a few because obviously there are eight and I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm going to focus on the purple section, which is vocabulary, because obviously that is a key skill. I'm going to focus on literal retrieval because that's another key skill and it's more basic questions, isn't it? And then I'm going to lead into the more tricky inferential questions. And in terms of progression, that's a really good order um, to teach the skills. So vocabulary first and then some literal questions leading into those more tricky inferential ones. So I might have a look at all these um, reading domain question keys. And I've read obviously that first page, there's some examples there. And I'm just going to choose one for the purpose of exemplifying. I'm going to choose what does the word proper, what does the word proper suggest about how Trevor feels about his job? And I might do some reading around, right? So let me just read you that section again. I told my mates I was a junior reporter, but really I was just the office boy. Now and again, I'd be trusted with a reporting job, small jobs only mind, and only when the proper reporters were busy. Have a little think. What does that word proper suggest about how Trevor feels about his job? 
So you might get the children to have a little chat about that amongst themselves, explore that. And then we might think, well, OK, are there any other words that back up what you've just said? So there's one word there telling me what the word proper suggests. But are there any other words that might back up your opinion about how Trevor feels about his job? So we'd be jumping on those words, like Caroline said before, jumping on that word proper. What does it mean? We might do some clarification about what that word actually means. We might look up the definition in a dictionary. We might find some synonyms in a thesaurus so the children really understand it, both in context and out of context. And then we'll find some evidence in the text. So we'll think, what does that word proper suggest about Trevor's feelings? And are there any other words? Is there any other evidence we can back that up with? OK, so that might be how we use our vocabulary key domain question keys there. Then I'm going to move on to some literal retrieval. So on our key cards, they are our lovely light green sections there. OK, and there's a few there, as you can see, they're all on the screen. But again, I'm just going to jump on one for the purpose of exemplification. So I'm going to do a true or false activity here. OK, so I'm just going to read that page to the children again. It was the 1950s and I was working for the local paper, the Lower Stock Journal. I told my mates I was a junior reporter, but really I was just the office boy. Now and again, I'd be trusted with a reporting job, small jobs only mind. And when the proper reporters were busy, still it got me out of the office and away from the endless tea runs and filing. It was weddings mainly. Everyone got married on a Saturday back then. So there was often a big fancy do at the church and a small wedding in the chapel at the same time. You can probably guess which one I got to report on. So I'm going to jump on there. Can you say if a statement is true or false? And then can you give evidence to support your opinion? So I might say, right, children, I'm going to give you some statements. You're going to tell them whether it's true or false. OK, the book is set in the 1960s who can tell me true or false and you might turn that into a little quiz might you might have the children with buzzers or whistles is it true or is it false and hopefully you'd get somebody saying i think it's false and you'd ask them to find the evidence where's the evidence to back that up how do you know it's false and hopefully the children will say we can see there in the first sentence, it says that it was the 1950s, not the 1960s. And what you might do as a teacher is obviously model that first, model to the children how to find the answer in the text before you expect them to do it independently. Then we might go on and we might find another statement. So we might say the newspaper mainly covered weddings, true or false? And obviously, if you've got the children working in pairs or individually, and hopefully they would come up with the answer that yes, in the first part of the second paragraph, it does indeed say it was weddings mainly. Brilliant. So we've got the children to find an answer there. And then I might finish with another one. OK, so true or false. Most people in the 1950s got married on a Friday. And hopefully the children will have a little look through and they'll say, right, no, it says everyone got married on a Saturday back then. And of course, what you might do to extend that is then ask the children to come up with a quiz. Can they think of three other statements with true or false answers? And they could ask them orally to their friends or to children on other tables around the class. OK, once we've done our literal retrieval, then we can build up to those more tricky inference questions. So, again, there are several inference questions there to choose from. But the one I'm going to look at is that word, what impression? Because that is a really high level skill and sometimes children struggle to understand what we mean by impression. But if you're using these reading domain key question keys from year three up to year six, by the time the children get to upper key stage two, they'll be so familiar with that language that they will find it a lot easier. So, yes, these are question stems taken from the end of key stage two assessments, but we want to be using them from year three with age appropriate texts. OK, so I'm going to jump on that word impressions. What impressions do we get of Trevor 
from these two paragraphs. So now I've delved a little bit further into the text. It was a greyish morning in March when the editor yelled at me across the newsroom. Say, Trev, pop along and check on Mr. Friston's tortoise, would you? See if it's awake yet. Back in those days, normal folk didn't have telephones at home. So, with my reporter's pad and some freshly sharpened pencils in my top pocket, I always wrote in pencil so I could check my spelling before I handed in my report, I jumped on my rusty old bike and pedalled off to the tiny village of Corton. Right, what impressions do we get of Trevor from these two paragraphs? And again, I might start by modelling um, some possible answers. So, Trevor has put his note report, his reporter's notepad and some freshly sharpened pencils in his pocket. What impression does that give us about Trevor? Can we take that one step further? He's taken pencils in case he makes a mistake and he wants to rub it out. What impression does that give us about Trevor? So we can build it up and we can model to the children. And again, we can promote those oral responses before we put anything um, into, into writing. We might build up then and we might turn that into a shorter writing opportunity and we might say, right, let's have a look back at both pages. So let's read the first page again and the second page. What impressions do we get of Trevor from those first two pages? And you can see there we can write our impressions in the left hand column and we can find as much evidence as possible from those two pages to back it up and we can write that in the right hand column. But again, we will very much build up to that. And as Caroline explained with Key Stage 1, exactly the same with Key Stage 2. We need to vary our approaches to writing answers down and we need to build up to that, which is why hopefully I've exemplified. You start with a lot of oral questions, expecting oral answers. Then you might do a written question with an oral answer, an oral question with a written answer, building up to those written questions and written responses as was exemplified on that previous slide with the impressions table. And finally, just to keep your eye on those lap statements, because those some of the key questions and those high value skills are quite tricky. So we might not be able to jump straight in to our key learning statements of justifying opinions using point evidence and explanation. We might need to break that down into our basic steps. So we might there first of all obviously start at our lap one, which is answering questions to justify responses to the text using point and evidence. And we build up through lap two and lap three. And that should really help um, with your differentiation. And those laps, again, are available in those progression documents, but also in our group reading grids to support your guided reading. OK, so I'll just stop sharing that. So just to say I hope that's been really useful, please do use these, put them in your reading toolkits and use them in all of your reading activities to help to promote understanding of texts. And that's all from us for now. Okay, take care, bye-bye.